Hey everybody, it's Mike Copera with PodcastCondition.com, uh, bringing you uh, episode 118 of What You Drinking. Um, I'm here with Chris, who is uh, in, uh, away from his chair at the moment, but he uh, he's definitely going to be joining us with a beer of uh, his choice. Um, last week we spun uh, the wheel a couple times actually, until we landed on something that we kind of all decided we wanted to drink. And uh, we landed on the white whales. Chris, I got it started here already, so we're on the air. I don't know if you can hear me yet. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear, Mars, sweet. Jupiter, Lander. All right, sweet. Um, so we ran, we spun the wheel a couple times, maybe three times <laughs> last week, that we landed on what we wanted. Um, we landed on the white whales. So uh, don't know. You said that you don't know if you've got a white whale, but I, I do, but. I'm being I'm being a hard ass and don't want to open any of them. One of my I want to open, but it's a bomber and I know I will regret it in the morning because yeah. it's so it's a 15% beer. Ah. And it's yeah. a bomber. A lot of them, I mean, that's why we hang on to them is because they got high alcohol and they can last, you know, right. a few years in the in the closet. So, um, what's the one you want to open up? Batch 5000 by Shorts. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I saw that you had that already. Yeah, I got it. I just, that's just going to be, I mean, if it's a 12 ounce bottle, I'd open really? it in a second. But is that really 15%? Yeah. Wow. How is it? It's, uh, it's, it's the 15% isn't on the taste at all and it's a lighter color. But when you taste it, it's heavier than it looks like mouthfeel. Yeah. Um, the problem is I drink it out of like a pint glass. So I didn't, I don't think I got a full experience on it at my buddy's. Um, he got several bottles. I've got two. I'm sitting on one. The other one's in the fridge ready to be drank, but I think I'm going to crack that on Friday. Um, nice. But I could go in my cellar and just drink something warm, something big and boozy that's like a stout. You know, at cellar temps, probably probably about – it's probably high 60s in there. Well, do you have a beer open now? Yeah, and it's not, it's not even close to White Whale. This is the Shorts uh, Swirl Stout. Which sounds awesome, but it's 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 all right. It's nothing. It's basically a milk stout that's got some. Um, it's a stout brewed with cocoa nibs, vanilla, and la and lactose. So it's supposed to taste like a tasty freeze, you know, like vanilla chocolate swirl. And oh. it's yeah, it's kind of like that. It doesn't blow my mind or anything. It tastes like a typical um, chocolatey milk stout. So gotcha. Um, well, feel free to throw anything in the right. fridge now. Because that way, by the time you're done with that one, you might have a little bit of, you know, it might be cooled up a little bit more at least. All right. Let me grab one thing and get a little bit chilled. I'll, I'll, I mean, the only white whale I've got that's. This is uh, the cap to the. Westy 12. Got. I got a Westy right here. Nice. That is a white whale for sure. Hold on a second. Uh, let me get something now. Now you're inspiring me. Hold on. <laughs> All right. So I'm, uh, I'm going to pour this for the folks watching uh, on YouTube here. This is the Westy 12. This is a notorious beer for any uh, any beer fan out there. Um, back in the 90s, or, uh, I would say, uh, I'd say probably 10 years ago, so 10 or 11 years ago, back in like 2005 or so, this was rated as the world's best beer. Um, this this is obviously the uh, the imported version. This is not straight from. Uh, from the tapestry in Belgium. This is um, the American imported version from um, Shelton Brothers here imported it because uh, the, typically the um, there's no label on uh, the true version that you would get from Belgium out of the Trappist, uh, ta uh, out of the monastery. So like this is a uh, the same beer. They just um, decided to release some to the United States to kind of uh, – pay for some of the restorations that they had to do with the uh, oh, man. with the um, um, where the monks lived yeah monastery Mo that's yeah. is that the name monastery? of it yeah, um, we, know, we know what you mean yeah so they uh, this is the American version not American version it's no different but it's because uh, the I guess I was reading up on this and the one that you would get from from them in Belgium, it's uh, there's no there's only this there's no label on the back. So uh, because we have you know all kinds of regulations on alcohol in the United States, the Sheldon Brothers uh, who imported this had to have a label put on. So 
Um, I've had this one a bit. The uh, there is a best before date on the cap, and uh, I've had it after that date. <laughs> it looks like it was because uh, I didn't get this beer until a buddy of mine gave it to me. He gave it to me like I was I was over at his house and and you know his name is uh, Bart. So Bart, thank you very much for this beer. Uh, first of all, it's let's take a look at what is it, first of all. Have you ever had this before? I've not. Okay. Have you? Yes, I've done a beer review on it. Okay, I'm but I did it. I did it right after uh, it was released in the states. I got a bottle from uh, Scott Shrewsbury, mm -hmm. uh, like Kentucky. He got a um, he got the whole pack, the little um, gift pack that was like eight beers or whatever, and the chalice and everything that came with it. Yeah, I think it was like a six pack. I was reading up on it because I forget. I didn't get a chance to grab any because they they released it like midday or late morning on the day that it was. Uh, being, you know, all the venues yeah. were selling it and stuff. I remember Kevin, uh, who joined us on the show, he um, he might have gotten some. I can't remember. I think a buddy of his went and got some or something like that. So he might have gotten a bottle on his on him. Uh, I remember being at Dark Lord Day with Dan a couple of years ago, and he he traded one of his uh, I forget the the barley wine that he's got like a a case full of. Uh, that doesn't exist anymore. I can't. Remember. Tom Hardy. Thomas Hardy. Yeah, yeah. He's always got that shit. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's it's really good. I've had one uh, or two actually with him, and uh, yeah, someone saw it in his bag, and they were like, "Holy shit, you got Thomas Hardy!" I, you know, and I got a Westy Twelve. I'll trade you for that, and so that was that was all Dan talked about on the drive home. Uh, <laughs> how excited he was about that. So it's um, I know he still has one. And uh, I just didn't want this to sit for too long, you know? Yeah, I think it came out. Okay, so I posted my review in twenty July, 1st of July 2013. I did the review in the summer, it looks like, because I'm dressed appropriately. <laughs> I'm guessing it came out early 2013 then. That's probably when it came out. I thought it was like 2012, but you might it be might, right. It might have been end of 2012. Maybe it just took, it took me a while to drink it. That might have been it, too. I don't think I drank it right away. Yeah, maybe you hang on to it or something like that. I didn't hang on to it long though because I did. I know I didn't let it age. I I really wanted to get the, taste it, and uh, I mean, I'm sure it gets more complex as it ages. But man, it was pretty complex by itself. So yeah, it's it's pretty. Uh, it looks like it was, yeah, gift packs consisting of six bottles of the Westy Twelve and two glasses starting in April 2012. Okay. Yeah, so I probably got it 2012 sometime and then let it sit, and then I cracked it open probably spring or so, early summer of nice. 2013. So. What's up, Mike? How you doing? Good. Good, good. How are you? Good to see you, man. Uh, I'm excellent. I'm much better now that we've got our beers poured. Nice. Um, excited to see uh, what you brought to the table. Were you able to find anything in the cellar worth taking out or that you were willing to take out? Yes, yes. It's uh, something that I actually got a couple weeks ago that uh, is, uh, it was, was waiting for a, a special occasion but wasn't going to wait too long, so I was glad to have a, an excuse to bring it out right now. Um, it is Hetty Topper. Nice. Yeah, you want to make that, you want to drink that fresh, man. Yep. All right. Yep. So I've got this was actually one of two that I had left. So one one tonight, maybe maybe one this weekend. I know you're supposed to drink from the can, but I always drink it from the can. So today I decided to pour it out. That's my uh, first. That was gonna be my first question. If you're just to have a look at it. <laughs> it's so cloudy. It's so cloudy. You know, you think about this with other you know pretty well known, really good IPAs like uh, you know Pliny, for instance. And that this is just so. It's just got such a different color and and you know, clarity here that it's really, you know, two very different but very good examples of the style, that's for sure. Yeah. I've only had that once when we were when I was in Boston with you guys at the Extreme Beer Fest. That's the only time I got my hands on that. It's I mean it's hard to get even here. I I got it a couple weeks ago when I was I was skiing in Vermont and um I went to Killington, which is probably uh it's probably like three hours from Boston, but 
uh, and we went up. I went up on a Friday, and, and but in order to get Eddie Topper, you still got to drive another like hour, twenty minutes further north than that to get to where they're selling it on Fridays. Yeah. Um, so so it was a little. Uh, it was like a basically a day trip just to get out there, and then another hour south to get to Killington to to meet up with my buddies where we were skiing. But but it's worth it. You know, I picked up a couple of four packs, and so you know I. Gave some to some friends, kept some for myself, and uh, down to down to one left. But yeah, this was the only I've, I've had it last year. I did the same thing, and I and I didn't have any of it in between. So it's it's tough to get even here, even uh, even close by, relatively close by anyway. Nice. How was uh how was skiing in uh, Washington? Nice, nice. It was good. You know, I had two uh, when I was at Killington a couple weeks ago. It was a real. Uh, uh, a good example of east skiing. It was it was a little icy, uh, not a lot of snow, um, but but that's uh, definitely east coast style. Out there, it was you know they had gotten like 68 inches the night before. Um, it was snowing all day while I was there. Um, it wasn't uh, yeah, the visibility was terrible because it was mm-hmm. cloudy and foggy and stuff in the mountains, but it just kept snowing all day long. So it was it was good. It was nice. That's cool. Yeah, is that, yeah. Is that typical I've Crystal skied. Mountain. Yeah, definitely. I've always wanted to, but uh, I've never skied. So is that is that better conditions? Does it make it easier to ski that way when it's snowing? It's. I mean, I think it's easier I mean, when you get all that fresh snow. It's easier to to ski. Uh, but but if you're not used to it, like me, you know, I'm used to skiing out here in the east, where usually you're on you're on ice or you know groomed trails and stuff. Um, and you're just not used to it. Like I immediately, I fall like three or four times within the first five minutes anytime I go skiing out west because I forget what it's like to ski with snow like up, you know, up to your knees. It's just a different, a little different way of doing it. Um, but it's, but it's awesome. It's, it's a lot of fun, and it, I like it better because the, you know, the steep trails. If you got all that fresh snow on steep trails, you can just bomb down them, and the snow itself like slows you down. Um, and then. Of course, if you fall, it's it's a lot softer. Um, there's really it's nothing like you know going down a trail and you hit like a bunch of snow and it all flies up in your face and stuff. It's just it's cool. It's a good good experience and and yeah, it's definitely that was my first time in Washington and um, it's the snow is definitely a little it was powder but it was wet. It was it was a little more damp than you get like in uh, Colorado or Utah or something like that, but sure. still. Very nice. Cool. You have any uh, any other beers worth noting out there while you were the remainder? No, just a couple. You know, I had um, what I mentioned last week when I was out there. I had the um, it was Cloudburst Brewing, which I still I've been meaning to look them up, but I, I just uh, looked enough on their website to find out when they were open when I was out there, and I didn't do any other research. But they've got to be within the last couple of months new. Um, and, and I had that one beer kind of on my way back to the hotel when I was there. It was it was great. Um, so interested to hopefully see a little bit more of them, although they're pretty small at the moment, so it may be a while. Bring anything um, home? No, no. I was I was traveling traveling light, um, so I didn't uh, I didn't get to pack anything and bring it home. But um, but definitely. Uh, any anytime I was out and uh, out there, I, I definitely went for the beer that I couldn't find uh, otherwise. So um, had some some new stuff, new to me anyway. So it, the um, so the the beer that you got, the Heady Topper there is uh, pretty hard to get around there. I, is is Hill Farmstead is also probably just as hard, if not harder, to get your hands on. I would assume harder. Really, <laughs> I'd say it's harder. I mean, it's. Uh, Heady Topper, I think it's got like gotten such of a following that that you know the people have posted the schedule of what stores sell it on which days, um, and and so people just follow you know follow the schedule, and as soon as it's out, you know that day it's gone. Um, Hill Farmstead, I think, has the benefit of not being as uh, for so, for whatever reason not being as publicized and and talked about. So you can go into a you know random store and find a couple bottles of it just sitting on the shelf just because no one people who know haven't come in yet to get it. Um, yeah. So so you can kind of happen upon it, but I also think that the, the distribution is far less um, for something like that. And uh, 
you know, you can get it in, and you're more likely, I should say you're more likely to find it in, in restaurants and bars and stuff that just happen to, you know, to, to, to know who to go to to get it, and so they'll have a keg of it. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of the best way to, to find it. And um, so it's, uh, you know, that and, and Lawson's, too, is kind of the same way. It's, um, well, the reason I ask is um, I got my hands on a... A, a Hill Farmstead uh, collaboration beer today. Um, oh, the Otter Creek uh, Hill Farmstead is it that one? No, it's not that one either. It's um, here, I'll post the link for you guys uh, on from the. I guess it was imported again by Sheldon Brothers, who are the same importers of the beer that I've got in my hands right now uh, for tonight's show. But this is another one that. Uh, I guess they did a collaboration with a beer, a brewery out in Belgium oh. um, that I'm not familiar with, but uh, this one's called Le Vermont. Uh, I don't know how to speak. Oh, I've I've heard about this one, um, but I've definitely not seen it around here. So good for you finding that one. Yeah, so it's um, it looks amazing, and uh, <laughs> the clerk at the store that I went to. It was. It's not my normal store that I go to, but it's near my my brother-in-law's place, who he raves about this this store all the time, and uh, I was over there uh, taking care of feeding fish and taking in mail while they were uh, out skiing in Colorado, and so um, I was like, well, I still have like 40 minutes on my lunch break. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit that store, and. Um, it was like, I don't know if, it wasn't even on purpose, but when I left, by the time I left, I looked in the bags that I had, and I had either Belgian-style IPAs, Belgian-style pale ales, or Belgian beers, or or Saisons. <laughs> <In, laughs> it was like, but it's cool. It, it comes in a, uh, a green bottle, um, and you could just see all the sediment in the, bo- in the bottom of the, of the bottle of it, so it... Uh, but yeah, the, the clerk was like, "Dude, that is a really good beer," and I think it was like nine ninety nine. So no it wasn't, kidding. yeah, it wasn't anything like crazy. So um, so I picked up that, and I picked up the uh, the new um, version of the the Raging Bitch from Flying Dog. They have it's called the Tropical Bitch. Jesus. And it's it's another Belgian style IPA, but it's it's made with uh, pineapple and mango juices with. Uh, passion fruit juice too. Mm. Uh, it's pretty good. I, I I would like to do a comparison between the two because it's you, you get a lot of the, the Belgian yeasty flavors out of it still. Um, so I I would love to compare the original to this one just to kind of get more of the fruit flavor out of it, but it's pretty good so far. So I like it. I got that and I got another um, Size on from microphone microphone brewing. Uh, they're they're the new big hit brewery out here in in Chicago. Really? Yeah, they're they're killing it right now. They they uh, I think it's called Traveling Man. Um, I think I saw. I bet you I saw somebody on this. Eric Erica. What's her name? Erica Knock. On Google Plus, yeah, I mean, she might have posted something. Like that. I remember seeing that, but I didn't realize it was Chicago. Yeah, microphone. They're they're getting all kinds of awards and crazy crazy stuff going on right now. Um, but let's see. Yeah, I can't see. It. There's a there's a, it's on Beer Advocate, but it's uh, it just says size on. But I can't get the um. Oh, wait, maybe I can zoom in on this picture. Uh, hopped up size on ale with. Yeah, it's too fuzzy. It's that, there's a certain kind of hops. I think might have been Galaxy. I can't remember, but uh, it looks pretty good too. Microphone's killing it. They they kind of um, name all their beers based on either bands or songs or album names. So they've got like um, smells like Bean Spirit, which is their their coffee stout, um, which is supposed to be amazing. I haven't had it yet, but it looks everyone's just raving about it. And they're um, they're opening up like a, a because they're they were in the city um, 
I think they were using Spiteful's brewing uh, equipment. Or no, they were sharing space with somebody else. I can't remember. But then they're now they're working out of Unani in the, the burbs up here, and they're building a joint in uh, Elk Grove Village, Illinois. So there, there's only like a few places that sell their beers outside the city, so I, I went to this one just to kind of get some of their stuff, so I got that as well. I forgot, uh, Mike, you didn't see what, what beer I had for the day. Yeah, what do you guys have? I got a Westy 12 here. Oh, man, a real, that's a white whale and a half yeah. there. I, I kind of was like, I really want to land on that so I can have an excuse to pull this beer out. Awesome. How is it? It's really good. Um, it's got, like, it's got a lot of... Um, barley wine character to it. Do you remember that at all, uh, Mike? Or uh, Chris, when you had it? Barley wine? I remember... I remember... I should go back while you're it's, doing this and watch my review. Um, I remember being a you know, typical Belgian quad, just being really dense, kind of heavy, really complex, just lots of... Lots yeah. of... I mean... It's like a lot of caramely. It's dark it's fruits just, type of thing going on, you know. Typical. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's like a combination of like dark, pruny kind of fruit, but then there's like the sour apple, just like a hint of the sour apple to kind of. Oh, it's real. I don't remember it being sour at all. Maybe that's I mean, it's age. not sour. I, you know, it smells more of like a sour apple. Right. The uh, it's very caramel. Very roasty, biscuity, but it's it's really good. But it's funny that there's so many new Americanized versions of this style of beer that back in you know ten or eleven years ago this was rated as the world's greatest beer, and it's great. There's nothing nothing bad about it. But there's a lot of beers that are pretty good, just you know pretty comparable in my opinion. It's I mean it's it's delicious, and I'm not knocking it at all, and Right. I just feel like there's there's a lot of good beers out now, and it, that's I guess that's the best thing I can say about uh, being being alive today as a beer fan is probably one of the best times to be around because it's like yeah. this was this was rated as the best beer back you know ten years ago, and it's still delicious. But we got a lot of beers that I I think kind of can compete with it, so it's kind of nice. What's the uh, what's the story behind uh, how you acquired that one? This one is funny. I so a buddy of mine that I went to college with has a good friend um, that he and I are you know we're not super close friends, but we we talk every once in a while. We're in a, the same band, so we we'll usually catch a show together, or we'll just run into each other at concerts. And he uh, he's big into beer. Uh, he probably got the best. The greatest beer seller I've ever seen in my entire life. He's got, I must have mentioned him before because I know I've talked about how he's, his brother lives in California and they kind of split the membership with the, the brewery and they get all their exclusive releases and stuff. So he gets, he's got, I mean, cabinets full of, of brewery stuff that you've never even seen here. Um, and he's got, he was like, yeah, I got, I got some extra Westy. He's like, if you want some, I've got. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was literally there to buy uh, last year's Dark Lord from him, and that's all that I went there for. And he ended up sh sending me home with the Dark Lord. He gave me the Westie and gave me like two bombers of his homebrew, and it was probably the best homebrew I've ever had. Jeez. Yeah, it was a good it was a good score, and uh, yeah, I thank him for and it. And you haven't been back there yet. <laughs> I haven't, to be honest. I haven't. Um, we had a baby since then, so I don't get up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I've been uh, itching to open this up since he gave it to me, and that was you know less than a year ago. But it's uh, the, the the cap even said that it was to be enjoyed by the eighth of January two thousand fifteen. So it's it's a little bit past its prime, anyways. But it's still, I mean, it's a. Uh, it's a nice Trappist. It's you know it's ten percent ten ten point two. So it. Two. It's yeah. made. It's built to last some time, yep. but so yep. On, yep. on the on the nose, I got brown sugar, mm -hmm. um, typical Belgian notes, other than that. And then on the taste, um, it was I, I called it velvety right off the bat, like very velvety beer, um, heavy on the front of the tongue, and then it kind of mellows out on the back, and then a lot of dark fruits, plums, raisins type 
you know, figs going on yeah. in that thing. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, it's got, it's almost got like a really smooth, like you're talking the velvet, velvety mm -hmm. feel. It's really smooth. It's like if I closed my eyes and I just, you know, concentrate on how it felt in my mouth, it's almost like a stout. Not so much exactly like that, but it's got more of that character than you would feel, you know, in like a pale ale or something like that. It's really, uh, it's smooth. It's really good. I said it was uh, along the lines of uh, the Rochefort Trio 6810, but mm -hmm. obviously I think it's it, one notch up from 10 even. Yeah, I agree. I haven't had that in a while either. Yeah, there's like it's pretty um it's pretty dense too. There's not a lot of light coming through this like through the center. It's all It is bottle conditioned, I believe, too. I believe so, yeah. I would I would imagine. That's what it said I said in there at some point at the beginning of this review. Let's see if this says anything worth mentioning. No, it's just imported by Sheldon Brothers, Trappist Ale. 10.2%. Yeah, I just called it I just called it a very very complex orgasmic beer. <laughs> it's a cool bottle. Yeah, it's got that little neck ring on it. Yeah, it says Trappist beer on it. Yeah, it's 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 a pretty beer and it's uh it's a cool bottle. I might have to just hang on to the bottle just for the hell of it. Yeah. But yeah, it's Oh yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> That would have been good. <laughs> I've got mine somewhere. Mine might be out in the garage, actually. Or mine's at. Yeah, what so. do you have tonight, Chris? I think I missed it. Or you were talking I about gosh, it. I didn't. All my all my really white whales are all bombers. Um, and I can't sit and drink a bomber on a Wednesday night and be anything useful tomorrow at work. So um, I, I had something. I threw something in the fr in the freezer uh, when Mike and I first got on. I sensed when I saw your heady topper, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go with... <laughs> What I have already cold, so I took the that beer out of the freezer. It was just a um, a local beer that wasn't really a white. It's a white whale in the sense that they don't they don't distribute outside of the town that they they're in, and that's the um, uh, Wolverine Massacre. I don't know if you've ever seen that, Mike. That's um, mm -hmm. it's uh, Wolverines out of Ann Arbor. They they brew some okay beers, but they do all lagers. Yep. So this is a dark lager that they bourbon barrel age, and every year they go up in ABV. This year's was fourteen percent. They actually had to bring it down. Because it was it, it was up too high, they wanted to notch it up one percent rather than I think it was up in the 15s. And it when you drink it, you're like, okay. First of all, it looks like a stout. You drink it and you're like, okay, the mouthfeel is a little bit lighter than a stout would be, but the bourbon is just it's right up there with like you know KBS or uh, you know some of the big you know big uh, backwards bastards, those big bourbon barrel aged beers. I mean, it's just amazing to get all that flavor out of a lager. So it's actually pretty cool. But I ended up going with, it's not really a white whale. I call it like a small baby <laughs> a uh, mis misformed orca, oh. and that's hop flam. Uh, so it's, oh, I guess it's, it's a white whale if you live in like the southwest maybe or something like that. But It's so a white like, whale anywhere. That, that I, I would think even people in the Midwest, they... They go crazy for it. I mean, it's um, the Vinnies out here. They the guy was like, "Yeah, we had it, and it was gone instantly." Like, yeah, people go crazy. It takes it takes. Uh, they got we, my beer store got two shipments in 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 a, in a week or two weeks time, and you know, I just I walked in on shipment day like I always do, and there was probably you know 10, 10 six packs sitting on the shelf, so I just grabbed one. But they're expensive, and I mean, it's a good beer, but. I don't think it's. I've had. I, I think I've had better, more complex beers like this style. I, I mean, it's, it's a, a good beer. It's a double IPA, right? Yeah. So, so you know, there's. A, it, it's great. I mean, it's been a. It's a. It was a huge deal back. You know, in the '90s and what in the early. Out? Yeah, when it. I mean, there wasn't a lot of beers like it. Now there's. There's a lot of stuff out there that you can get that's not a, a twenty dollars six pack. So right. it's like. It's good, and I would probably buy it if I got my hands on it, but I'm not going to go hunting that one down. No, I see people buying three, four, six packs, and they take pictures of it, like, yeah, look what I got. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to pay that much. I'll buy a – I mean, that shorts was bad enough. I was a bomber for 20 bucks. For was sake. it really? Yeah, it's $20. Wow. It's a triple, though. It's a triple IPA. So, I, I mean, it's like – yeah, it's a big beer. Um, And that's what I was going to bring out tonight, but I just – that's that's a bomber at 15%. I just would – I've already had two beers. I would, 
I'd be like Dan was last week, right? At Eleven o'clock <laughs> after the thing, his eyes are like droop, and he's like, "Dude, I gotta go, man." Wait, 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 all right, see ya. <laughs> hold on a minute. And so after I after we signed off, you guys stayed on, and it was like eleven o'clock. Yeah, we usually him and I sometimes usually stay on, and usually about eleven, he usually starts to say, "All right, I gotta get going." <laughs> and it's usually fine, but last week he was tanked. Really. <laughs> His eyes are crossing and all that stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> what's funny is usually after a show and he's been drinking enough, and it's probably after he's been hanging out with you, he will be uh, posting like music all over Facebook. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like all through the night. It's kind of fun. Chilling out. Yeah, that's good. Awesome. That's, that, that's how you gauge when Dan had a good night. Uh, <laughs> Um, speaking of some white, uh, some highly sought after beers in uh, Michigan, did you see that uh, Founders announced their KBS week? Yeah, it was, it was the seventh through the twelfth, I believe. Yeah, Grand Rapids, March seventh through the twelfth at the Tapper Millie's party on the twelfth. So they uh, they're gonna sell. And that's messed up because anybody that went to the Winter Beer Fest, I don't know. That's only it's a week later. That's. Right. I mean, that was another reason why I was like, I, I had to turn down the, the beer fest because, one, I, I just couldn't go after that amount of time went by and plans had been made since then. But uh, So, like, when are the tickets going on sale? It's like... Uh, uh, this weekend, 12th, February. I believe. So yeah, Friday. Saturday. Saturday. 12th. Yeah. It's, it's 12th. Friday... I'm reading on the site right now. Tickets for vinyl sales of KBS will go on sale on Saturday, February 13th through event Okay, okay my bad. Uh, so what time is that at? I would assume noon, right? Don't I think it does say 11, I thought. on that. It does say 11, 11 Eastern time, though. So that's uh, 10 your time. Yeah. That, that could work. Fuck. I mean... Shoot, <laughs> I got. I don't know what time we're leaving that morning, but uh, I'm gonna try to get those. Cause I, I would love to go, even if it's, even if it's not going out for the weekend. I'd like to just go out there, pick some up, and, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe I could just get a guy here and just <laughs> hang out to it for me. I, I just, uh, I know I'm going to Michigan. Uh, oh shoot. This, what is it? The twelfth? Like two weeks later, I'm going up to to Bel Air, so I don't know. If yeah, I see. Yeah, it's just tight. I don't mm -hmm. know why. I don't know why they do that. I mean, if it was a different type of the year, I'd probably go up there. But if I had to wait between KBS and Winter Beer Fest, I'm gonna go Winter Beer Fest because they'll have KBS there. It may not be this year's, but you know. And then I'll get a bunch of other stuff that's just great too. You know. Speaking of which, I should see if the uh, it's got to be out by now. The uh, Winter Beer Fest um, beer list. Oh, yeah, they do put the list out. I forgot about that. Yeah, and it's usually just packed, packed with bourbon barrel aged beers. Yep. Friday's still open. I can, they, this is what happened last year. Saturday yeah. sold out Im immediately. Friday still got um, Friday still got tickets available. We'll see. Um, so when is that weekend? That, is that the last week of this month? Yeah, 27th. No freaking! Are you kidding me? They still don't have the beer list. That's messed up. Messed up. So, um, hmm. While you're looking that up, did you see? Did you guys see anything about the rumor about Cigar City? No. What now? So the rumor is they're the the next acquisition for EB and Bev. They've um, been. It's because they they've already hit them a couple times and they've turned them down. Well, so so they say that they'll meet with them or anyone just to kind of gauge what what the value of their company is, you know, on the market, and uh, and and they'll usually contest it and say that yeah, we're just doing that. Um, this this time around, they're declining to give any kind of a public statement, and uh, and I guess it's the same thing that was going on with because I think. Um, New Belgium was also uh, rumored to be having conversations, and they said the same thing. It's just, uh, let's see, obligated to seek company valuation, and this is one approach to doing so. Why? you got to value your company. Hmm? I don't understand why you got to value your company. I'm not a business guy, but why do you got I mean, if you know you're not going to sell, then why do you got to evaluate it in the first place? 
Well, I mean, I do you really blame any of these guys for selling? Uh, I mean, if they don't have someone in their family who's going to take the business over, they're going to have to find somebody to buy it when they're ready to retire. And if well, you know, or the, yeah, or they just yeah, I mean, it's just like any other business, I guess. You don't see other. I mean, I guess other businesses aren't quite as there's this big conglomerate, I guess, that's overshadowing, you know, the, um, I guess there are, as I'm thinking, I, I'm talking out loud and thinking at the same time. But. I can't think of another industry where there's a, a, a growing value on something right here and now, you know, like, yeah. until marijuana goes legalized, because that'll be the next thing, but right now, like, Breweries are just the big thing, and you know, at Ballast Point sold for a billion dollars. Like, who in their right mind would turn down a billion dollars? I don't. Yeah, I mean, I guess I get these. I guess these companies, depending on the agreements, they could say, you know what, a billion dollars that'll set up, set up me, and I'll take care of all my employees, and I'll go open another brewery. You know, exactly. I love doing Who's this? to say they can't do that? Yeah. Well, they may do some kind of com no compete clause type Maybe. bullshit. You know that. Right, they can't they can't do that or do any you know because you know what Budweiser is doing is they can't win enough space on the shelves but they figure if they take up because they don't make enough good craft beer to take up all that shelf space so what I think they're trying to do is they're buying these little breweries here and there that have pretty decent following in one or two of their beers or maybe several and they're taking up that space by overpowering all the craft beer by supplying their own bought craft beer is the way I look at it. So they want to get rid of the rest of the craft breweries or a more of a get rid of their growing footprint in the grocery stores and the beer, beer stores by replacing that beer with their own, you know, craft beers. And they're, they're, what was their, their stuff they used to make back in the day? I don't know if they still make it anymore, but um, what was it, the uh, Amber Bach and stuff like that that they tried to come out with. And, mm -hmm. Or even like Miller's or Coors, Miller Coors Molson or whatever the hell it's called now. Um, you know, Blue Moon and stuff like that. Yeah, Blue Moon is doing great, but, you know, some of those other ones that they've made maybe aren't doing as well. And their way to do that is let's buy Ballast Point. Then we've got a beer on the shelf that everybody wants to drink because they're already drinking it. And now we bump somebody else off the shelf that never, maybe isn't moving as quickly. Well, I mean, that. Ballast Point was bought by, like, Constellation Brands, which owns, like, a bunch of, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think a lot of uh, Mexican-style lagers and, and beers like that. So They didn't have a craft beer at all. But no. they're a more of, I think, more of a world worldwide, I guess, distributor than they are, than they are like, a, like AB InBev and... I mean, their Coors is. I mean, they're more of a... But they were number three behind the two, so there wasn't, like, this little bitty place. I think they were number three behind, as far as size goes, between behind Miller Coors and uh, AB InBev, so... So what is your opinion on this, Mike? Like, what do you... How do I you see say, Yeah, I don't... I mean, I don't blame them for, uh, you know, New Belgium or, or whoever for for listening to the offer and, and hearing what people have to say and, and getting an evaluation because really I mean if that's that's one of the most reliable ways I think to, to value what you have is to have someone come in and, and say well I'll give you I'll give you X for for the whole thing and and then you know and yeah maybe you're not interested but then if a year from now someone else comes along and also offers you 2x well maybe maybe you are um, or like you were saying, like if you're, you know, you're looking at retirement and you're looking on getting it out, getting out and there's no one, to, no one to really turn it over to, you know, maybe you, uh, you take the fact that you got that valuation from a couple of years ago and say, well, I know that, you know, in two years ago I was worth this much. So I know I'm worth at least that much now, if not more. And, and then when you go to shop yourself, cause you want to get out, then you, at least you've got a kind of a benchmark for, for what to do. Um, but yeah, like I think I think your exam I think your example of someone who, you know, sure you know they they started as a homebrew or they started as such a small operation they grew they grew the business they got they got big and now they're attracting the attention of InBev or Constellation or whoever, you know they're they're probably thinking like this is great like I'm I'm committed to making really good beer for for the fans out there but 
I know that I'm not going to be able to do this forever, and and it's a lot of work, so I probably don't want to do it forever. Yeah. Um. So I think you know maybe that's that's part of it too. Like I I used to I used to feel a lot strongly against it uh, when especially here in Chicago it was a our hugest hit was Goose Island obviously when that happened, which is funny because the amount of money that they were offered is like. It, in comparison, almost like peanuts to what these places, you know, good like a few deal. years good later, deal, like, that, uh, that they had back then. <laughs> but they were like, they were like up there with one of the first ones, so it was like, you know, but um, you know, that hit home pretty hard, and and that pissed a lot of people off. Um, but the thing is, like, well, like Chris said, there's you know so much shelf space now, and there's a lot more craft breweries out there, and. Honestly, um, the, the battle is not going to be just against the big guys anymore. Like it's, you know, we've had a lot of collaboration and kumbaya and friendship within the craft beer community, but I don't, I don't see that lasting very long. I, I, there's going to be so many breweries out there, and there's only going to be so many tap handles and so many, so much self, shelf space that um, there's going to be a skew war. There's, there's so many like IPAs are the, the most you know, popular style out there, and there's like a new IPA coming out every two weeks. You know, but some breweries are constantly just pumping them out, and that's what sells. So with that that many beers coming out all the time, and um, so little shelf space, like these breweries are being bought up not to turn them to crap and and put them out of business. Like they're spending good money to buy these these companies because. They're making money right now, like Bud and Miller and all them. They're 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 flatlined, you know. They're they're kind of at their um, right. they're pretty stale right now, and and craft is what's growing. So that's where they're making money. They, I, I think, beer consumers are are a lot str- smarter now um, than they were. So those crafty styles, like the shock top and and the ambers that you were talking about, Chris, um, people know who's making that and. Some people are probably still buying them, but some people are still buying Budweiser and mm. Miller. So it's like they're not. Um, they're, it's funny because like the the Super Bowl commercials are are the new thing now for craft beer people to get all pissed off about. But it's like they're not advertising us, and they're not like really trying to shit on us in our face. They're not trying to like shoot it in our face. They're advertising to the people who are already buying those shitty beers that they make. Because those people like them, and that's fine. That's that's what they are. That's what they're advertising towards, and that's their market there. But you know, at the same time, I'm still seeing commercials for Goose Island on TV, and they're not they're not shitting on craft beer at all. They're you know they're saying nothing but good stuff about about Goose Island. So they're not um, you know say what you will. It might be like a well, and I see. I think they'll ba- they'll bash all those breweries that they bought. Why why wouldn't they? You know because they still they still have that brand Budweiser. They can I think they can still bash them, thinking, okay, this will take a little hit on the craft beer market. But you know but we it, still have those beers. It, People are still going to drink them, and we know they're they're going to still drink them. And we're just you know they're trying to beat their thump their chest, you know. And I, I don't think they care. I mean, who they if they didn't. They don't care if they hurt themselves on that. They could at any point they could snap their fingers and get rid of, you know, Bourbon County or anything like that, or Goose Island for that matter. I shouldn't say Bourbon County, but Goose Island in general or who, whomever, you know, they could take Goose Island and retag it, you know, Bud Goose Island or something like that. But they know marketing wise that's probably not a good idea. But honestly, they're they're there for the buck. And that's what they're there for. And if they want to bash on their own brands that they've recently brought bought, then so be it. I mean, just like when they bought what was the the brewery they bought and uh, was it was out in Washington State? Uh, it was out in Washington State, or I, I always get it confused with the other brewery that's out in like um, Nebraska. Elizan, Elysian. Oh yeah, Elysian. And, yeah. and they had just brewed like some kind of raspberry beer or something like that, and then they had that that Super Bowl commercial last year. Yeah, and it was something about it was basically ripping on that same beer even before they bought it or whatever, and so it was a big joke. So I don't think they care. But that again, they're not that that commercial wasn't for us, not the not for the craft beer people. That's right. for the the bud drinkers. Because yeah. 
I mean, they're sending a double message out there for all, but, but they they sell a lot of different beer now. So it's like right. that commercial wasn't for craft people. No. Um, so we might not like that commercial, but we don't like any Bud commercials. You know, I mean, they're <laughs> we're fun. not gonna like it now anyway. They're yeah. Usually funny, but like any beer commercial that we see from them advertising for Budweiser is not gonna get us to buy Budweiser. So. They're not trying to get us to convert. They're not trying to convert us. They know that there's enough people out there already that are buying that those beers. They're just those are ads to just keep shoving it in their face to say, hey, remember, bud, don't go to Miller. Right. Um, but you know, the other commercials out there that that uh, for the breweries that they're they're purchasing now, those are those are genuine craft beer commercials, and they're trying to get us to you know buy their beer instead of another craft brewery. Yeah, yeah. If we're gonna buy craft, they'd rather have us buy uh, Goose Island, or, or they Constellation would rather have us buy Ballast Point than mm. than go into like Lagunitas or something. And it's, mm. I mean, it's it's a big company, so like, of course, we've got the mentality that this is a big conglomerate, you know, conglomerate that wants to stomp out all the little guys. But it's like there's employees there that are probably good people, and there's probably employees there that are assholes. But like, that's with any company, and. I think there's a lot of uh, a stigma when when a company gets too big. You know, you either hate Starbucks or, you know, uh, you know, Lagunitas is is getting to be one of the biggest breweries out there. And a lot of people, you know, they don't like Tony McGee as it is sometimes to to begin with. But um, for the most part, it's 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 a different um, it's a different playing field. If you're trying to start up a new brewery right now, if you're looking to ramp up expansion the way that Lagunitas did, you're going to need a lot of capital and a lot of... Uh, oh, and don't forget, Lagunitas isn't isn't all-American either. Remember, they sold 50% to Heineken. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but... I mean, but and look what, they, look what they're doing with it, man. They're going to be they're going to be in Mexico. Like, mm-hmm. they're going to be the, the... When someone orders an IPA in Mexico, that's going to be the brand. Like, everyone's going to buy that that beer. It's crazy. Like, I, I don't know. I listen to a lot of podcasts that talk about this a lot, and uh, it, it's kind of opened my eyes a little bit more on the just reality of what's going on. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's a it's an exciting time. It's 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 crazy. I I think in five to ten years, like what we're talking about now is going to be so different. It's it's going to be a totally different <laughs> story. Yeah, it's it's definitely. I still think uh, the 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 place to be in is is a little niche nano brewery that's you know around the corner from you that's content with just you know gro- a few growler fills here and there and just you know selling beer to the the patrons that walk by the you know the storefront you know type of thing the little nano breweries. Hey, I love those. I love yeah. them, but but those um those breweries they have to grow sometimes. Uh, when when there's enough demand, um, and they don't have enough capacity to to brew the beer that everyone's mm. hunting for, you know, like or uh, Three Floyds had this issue. They had so many people, you know, getting pissed off at them and and shitting all over them uh, on the internet because people would drive there for you know, let's say Zombie Dust or even before that any of their other beers, and uh, they'd be out and they'd they'd have to turn people away and it really uh, soured a lot of people on them. And the only way to, to fix that is is to grow and get get more tanks and grow, you know, size wise to, to have the capacity to to fulfill the demand. And is, is that the only answer though? Or could it be that maybe they just uh, you know change their business model? Maybe they don't release zombie dust every year, every every you know, is it a, in the seasonal release or an annual everyday year-round release I and mean, they make it to a seasonal or or do something different you know or maybe they're just content I don't know if that's necessarily the you know the the brewery down the from where I used to work the guy there said I'm content as long as I can get to a point where my wife doesn't have to work now that may change you know that always people as money comes in people's Outlook on life changes. So, but what was the reason Joe Short gave for having to, to expand outside of Michigan? Yeah, I mean, well, that was yeah. So it's, that's what I'm saying. It's different for everybody. He wants to be able to provide for his employees, and he can't right now because the the market in Michigan has gotten so 
Saturated. So, yeah, so saturated. So he's got us. The only way he can make continue making the money he was probably making is to go outside. I don't think he's expanding though. I mean, they did up to one point, but um, you know, he's not really expanding necessarily to well, get ex- bigger. expanding uh, distribution wise. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think it depends. I mean, I think there's. I think that's something to it. Like you know, they're that for the moment they're content being that neighborhood, you know, nano brewery, and then they get a little bit of a following, and then they feel like, oh, I could do a little, do something a little bigger, and all yeah. of a sudden it's a slippery slope, and you're being looked at by Heineken or something like that. But you know, the beer I've got Hetty Topper here tonight, and by all. By all means, the alchemists should be much bigger than they are. But mm-hmm. you know, that uh, and and same thing with Hill Farmstead. It's just guys living out in the woods that are happy to do what they do on their farms, and and that's it. And there's there's been some talk now of, of the alchemist expanding and and getting a bigger uh, bigger operation and and a little more distribution. But I mean, it's been it's been years. It's been years where that these beers have had such a big following and and they have not grown at all. And distribution's been than nothing, and you have to drive out into the middle of nowhere to find them. Um, so it, I think it depends. It depends on the on the brewer. It depends on the the owners and what they what they really want. I think it has a lot to do with marketing now too, because if you if you don't have uh, good marketing to get loyal customers to consistently come back to you, if you're like one of those small you know local places that you were talking about, Chris, there's so many new breweries popping up and so many new beers on the shelves every every week, every two weeks now that, like, you can get forgotten. Well, keep in mind, though, a lot of those nano breweries, or most of them, don't distribute. They're there. They're like a bar in the sense that they're mm-hmm. not – you have to go to them to get the beer. Um, you know, and those places, if they're not willing – like the place I would go to there, they – Tibbs, they um, – you know, just to get Michigan mobile canning in there – they didn't have the room for it, so there was no way for them to really get the canning in there, and they couldn't put it in the street. They didn't have a space to do that, so there's real no way, really way for them to, you know, package their beer and get it on shelves. So they were actually content with just expanding a little bit inside just to get more patrons in there and continue brewing and doing what they're doing. So those are the places I think that are, if they're not going to distribute, I think they'll be fine because if they've got the local neighborhood supporting them or local area, won't necessarily the neighborhood, but maybe the local city that they're in or town, they will survive and continue thriving. And those are the ones I think that will be overlooked by all these other bigger breweries. You've got the places like Founders and places like Tapestry that's on the west side of Michigan or by um, Greenbush and stuff that, and even Greenbush for that matter, that have dove into the whole packaging thing and distributed it out. And I don't, you know, their beers are okay, but they're not, like, blowing my mind. And people will try them and then, you know, move on like I, like I've done, and I just don't think they're gonna make a killing on the packaging part um, on some of their beers unless it's those seasonal, you know, big. I wouldn't say white whales, but those big, big over the top beers that maybe they make that they leave just for those special releases. Those are the ones they're gonna make maybe some good money on. But I don't know, man. I I think. I think Greenbush does some pretty good... Greenbush uh, does. I, I threw them in there, and I shouldn't have, but Tapestry is a good one. Hideout's another one in Grand Rapids. It just I don't know why they're on the shelf. I mean, they got some wacky beers that, that are okay. They're not they're not bad, but they, you know, they're they they're easily forgotten. So. Yeah. Yeah, Tapestry, I, I liked um, a lot more the second time I was there. The first time I was like, this is just... I felt like someone was just, they had a lot of extra money and they, they knew that craft beer is uh, the new big hit, mm-hmm. so they're going to ride that wave. But the second time I was there, the food was tons better and the beers were, were fantastic. Um, but I, I think with Greenbush, I, I think, I mean, I think they do, they're successful on both ends. They distribute to here to Chicago and I'd say probably... More once a month at least, I've had a um, an anger, you know, like they're those uh, the black IPA from them is it's amazing, mm-hmm. and they have a lot on the shelves here in Chicago, so I assume they sell pretty well. Um, and so they're, but they also locally, if I lived around there, I would be there all the time. Mm-hmm. Their, right. their location's amazing. They got the annex across the street now that you could just chill outside and you know. Playbags or shuffleboard or whatever they got out there now. Mm-hmm. 
So the local uh, audience there is probably pretty loyal, I would assume. Yeah. But, you know, who knows? The it, I guess it might be... I, I'm talking... When I when I see this kind of a saturation going on, Chicago is insane when it comes to beers right now. The the store that I was just at today, and I bought a bunch of new stuff that I never had. There's so it was like overwhelming how many beers are on the shelves now these days. It's mm -hmm. it's crazy, especially just here locally in Chicago. There's a new brewery popping up and expanding like every month. It's 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 insane. So I went to, when I went to Benny's two two years ago, summer uh, two summers ago. Um, I was blown away. I was like, "Oh my god, my wife's gonna kill me!" Because I'm just like, on, "We don't get this in Michigan. We don't get this in Michigan." And, you know, I was getting stuff left and right that we don't, you know, see. And then I was like, "Okay, I gotta, I gotta get top five here because I gotta get wrap my head around what I can get. I can't get everything here on the shelf." But yeah, there was just so much I couldn't believe it. And come back, I guarantee you, you're gonna, you're, you'll be further blown away. It's crazy. <laughs> it's insane. Like. Just the small little tiny liquor store that I was at today had had shit that I never like. I had I was I was talking to Mike while you stepped away for a second. Like I had a Hill Farmstead beer on the shelf there. They they collaborated with some Belgian uh, brewery that uh, was imported here and somehow um, was shipped to that store. I'd never seen it anywhere, and it's never been. I've never seen that at a Binnie's anywhere. So it was like. I had to grab that, and it was like, there was this, there was that. I was like, I was so overwhelmed. And he, the guy was like, you want to put all this on the counter here so you can continue shopping? I go, no, because my wife will kill me if I do that. So I'm just going to go with what I got here. I'm like, let's just <laughs> right. let's go with this. you know. So it, it's um, it's crazy here now in Chicago, especially see, because we've got so many new ones. Admit, yeah, and see, that's the problem with Michigan is that it's like we get we get a new one, you know, something pops up on the shelf, and then all of a sudden somebody else's falls off. You know, somebody comes and somebody leaves. So it's just we don't have a lot of imports from other states, like like for instance, like you do, or even Indiana for that matter. We've got our we're already saturated with internal intrastate breweries that we do get some imports, and some of them are cool. But you know, like um, uh, who? Ballast Point, right? That's who we're talking about. Ballast Point out of mm -hmm. San Diego. Yep. They just showed up immediate. I mean, literally like the week after they were bought. Oh, and, really? Yeah, they showed up like wow. gangbusters here. So I was like, and the bar, the the beer store guys were all like, yeah, we got Ballast Point in, and I'm like, well, you know, yeah, you got them in, right? And they're like, I don't know, I really don't. And I'm like, because they just got bought out by a distributor, and they're like, really? They didn't even know. I'm like, well, yeah. We, we've only had them here for. Maybe like a year at this point now, because I I remember being in uh, South Carolina for for a weekend away or something, and they had grapefruit sculpin, and it was it blew my mind. It was great. I I had to take a bunch home. Literally a week after we got home, it's been on the shelves at Binnie's ever since, and it's <laughs> it's been I can I can get it anywhere. I can get it at I can get it at a grocery store now. Jewel here is our like grocery chain. I can get it there any day I want. Yeah, yeah, that's been the case here too. Like we've always been able to have Sculpin, like that's been around for mm -hmm. for a while here. But right after that acquisition, like now we've got everything. It's like all mm -hmm. sorts yeah. of different different kinds of all different kinds of Sculpin. Plus, you know, I I I actually grabbed a. I forget what kind of beer it is, but it's like a ginger or something or other, like flavored with ginger. And I was like, that's something I've never seen before. So I grabbed it, but like definitely didn't have anything like that before that acquisition. Yeah. Yeah. See, so we, we didn't have any of it. We, uh, whenever that acquisition was fall last year or something like that, we, that's when we started getting them. And yeah. then all we get is we get grapefruit and we get regular of the Sculpins and that's it. And then we get Victor, the Victory C. We get we get a bunch of stuff in Bombers. That's pretty eclectic. But the yeah. six packs is probably four or five we get. Kind of like just like Dogfish Head. We get some of their their Bombers, the, the stuff that's out around all that, Theo Brahma or whatever, the um, uh, Bitches Brew, Positive Contact. We get those all the time in the Bombers. But in the six packs, all we get are, you know, 60-minute, 90-minute, um, 
you know, the the typical stuff that you can pretty much get anywhere. We don't get any of this that special release crap. And that's I think what like everybody's posting the pineapple sculpin right now. I'm like I walk in every day to my beer store and I'm like, no, oh, still not here. And I've just heard about that one, but I've not seen it yet. Yeah, we won't get it. We we get like the mainstream stuff, and some of it's the town I live in. If I were lived in Detroit, I probably have a better chance of finding something like that. But I think they kind of dust us over because we're in the middle of the state and they don't think we're big. <laughs> craft beer town, which is true, because I can get some stuff. If it's a if it's a beer that's from out of state, it'll sit on the shelves for a lot longer, maybe a few weeks, rather than something like um, uh, KBS or something like that, you know, here in state, where it just, it's gone immediately. So, mm -hmm. so uh, I, I don't have the iPad. I can't find it. I don't know who stole it. Uh, so I'm going to leave it to one of you guys to declare what, what mm -hmm. the style should be next week. I mean, you guys have any Takes for anything, any uh hmm. I don't have any ideas. I almost said triple IPAs, but I'll, that batch batch five thousand will be gone. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'd like to do a uh I don't know, something it's uh we've gotten a lot of snow the last couple of days here, so I'd like to see something uh Spring like, like a saison or something uh, that makes go Maybe warmer, a or something warmer weather. That sounds good. I was just thinking, I was thinking like a triple or something like that. Maybe. All right, I'm down with that. That might be too. That might be a little too. That might be more summery, but um, that's all right. We could do that. What What did you? What style specifically did you say? I didn't. You said uh, saison. Saison. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's do saison. I got plenty of those in the fridge right now, so I don't know if they'll last, but uh, if I like one of them, maybe I'll buy another one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining. Appreciate you guys uh, jumping on with me, and uh, we'll be on next week, same time as always, and uh, and cheers. I, I already finished my beer, but uh, thanks for, yeah. for jumping on. All cheers, right. guys. Cheers. cheers.